here among uh, such remarkable uh, moral heroes of mine uh, to be able to address you this morning. And I am also thrilled, uh, as, uh, as was uh, just mentioned, to be here among uh, many members of the Jewish community. Uh, Rabbi Lynn Gottlieb, who is a rabbinic colleague of mine, uh, but also members of Jewish Voice for Peace, U.S. Campaign. If I could just ask the Jewish uh, members to raise your hand so you can see you're among friends. <laughs> so, I think this is crucially important. Uh, my name is uh, Brant Rosen. I'm the rabbi of a congregation in Evanston, Illinois, in the Chicago area. I'm also the co-chair of the Jewish Voice for Peace Rabbinical Council. And I am someone who considers my primary spiritual home to be the American Jewish community. And I'm here to tell you, if I have one thing to tell you, it is that our community is not monolithic. Uh, on any issue, and it is certainly not uh, marching in lockstep on the issue of church divestment. Uh, there are uh, many constituencies in the Jewish community, uh, and to my dismay, to my increasing dismay, uh, the what I would refer to as the Jewish establishment is often the voice that uh, is the loudest and the voice that is given the most credence by the outside world. But the Jewish community is a wonderful, diverse, uh, uh, kaleidoscope of many, many different uh, points of view, many different members, uh, and we uh, are finding our voice. We are finding our voice in a very important way. So that is really my most, uh, my most primary message for you, is uh, that you have friends in the Jewish community, and we are ready to stand with you, and I am thrilled that there are so many of us uh, in this room, and that will be uh, with you uh, during the course of this conference. Uh, I grew up in the American Jewish community, as I said, it's my home. I grew up for most of my life as a liberal Zionist, and uh, I identify with Israel. I've identified with Israel for pretty much my entire life, and I visited more times than I can count. Uh, but uh, the trips that invariably that I took were these hermetically sealed trips uh, on one side of the Green Line um, that, that presented one image of Israel. And to be honest, I was, uh, I was afraid, like many Jews are, to venture to that other side, both physically and, and emotionally and spiritually. Uh, but what really um, caused a transformation in my relationship to this issue was meeting Palestinians, Palestinians like Daoud and Alex and Sandra and, and many others, uh, and getting to know them as individuals, visiting their communities, uh, and most important, seeing face-to-face -face the intolerable situation on the ground that is uh, allowed to continue. Uh, that has caused, for me, an important political and spiritual transformation, and I believe that transformation is occurring in the Jewish community as we speak, especially among the younger generation. Uh, there is a different relationship to this issue, and we are finding our voice, we are also finding engagement with uh, like-minded uh, spiritual colleagues such as the United Methodist Church. I have found that it is possible to engage in this issue in a new way. I ended up taking 20 members of my congregation last year, a little over a year ago, uh, to, on a trip that only visited uh, East Jerusalem and, uh, and the West Bank. We visited uh, Daoud uh, at his family's farm among other places, and I knew that, like me, if I could get my congregants there to see it with their own eyes, they would understand uh, why this has become so important for me. Uh, and, uh, and it has been. It doesn't mean that we are monolithic within my congregation. I don't speak for my entire congregation. Uh, but we do believe that there should be a place for all voices in the Jewish community. And I would like to think that what we're trying to do, and it's very difficult, is to create a model for the Jewish community where we can truly engage honestly on this issue. I've been saying a lot about engagement, and I want to just uh, say a few words about that. I think it's important to engage. I think it's important to create new relationships. On the, is on the issue of Israel and Palestine, there has been a great deal of engagement. There has been political engagement. Uh, there has been uh, 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 investment economically in, uh, in peaceful pursuits in Israel and Palestine. But I want to say that if you are out to create real and lasting change, engagement is not enough. Uh, I come from a spiritual tradition, as you do, uh, that says do not stand idly by. Uh, 
and uh, in Hebrew the words uh, idly by can also mean uh, do not uh, profit from the blood of your neighbor. Uh, that is a, a ver very uh, important spiritual imperative, especially when you see that engagement is not working. And up until now, engagement has not worked. It has not managed to shift to the oppressive status quo on the ground. And that is why something like a selective divestment is so crucially important. Uh, that we not profit from the blood of our neighbors. Uh, and it is painful, and it is difficult, I know, for many Jews. Uh, but I am here to tell you um, that uh, I am saying to my Jewish colleagues, we have nothing to fear uh, from friends like our friends in the United Methodist community and the Kairos response, that they are our friends and they are our colleagues in this work, and that we have nothing to fear from them. In fact, uh, it is time to let go of our fear when we do the, uh, as a result of doing this work. So I am honored to be with you. I am humbled to be with you, and uh, we. I want you to know that the Jewish that there are many in the Jewish community that stand together with you uh, in this very sacred work that we're doing together. Thank you so much.